Good morning. Uh, we were uh, discussing about the manufacturing of ceramic uh, disc insulators uh, used for uh, high voltage transmission. Uh, various uh, methods or the flow chart which was used for the manufacture was discussed in detail. Uh, we will uh, now uh, look into the importance of uh, the glass insulators, how the glass insulators are manufactured uh, manufactured in the industry. So, the suspension glass insulators are uh, used like a porcelain or a ceramic insulator for transmission and distribution purposes. Uh, these insulators have a very good contamination uh, performance because of the self healing uh, uh, or a cleaning uh, properties. These uh, glass insulators are very good for remote areas in particularly where uh, uh, gun shooting or helicopter patrols are not of uh, regular or uh, the activity is not uh, there. So, here in the glass insulator the outer glass surface is normally under higher uh, tension and compared to the inside glass uh, sheds. So, any damage uh, caused to the outer surface could cause violent shattering of the shell with the spontaneous uh, failures in the line. Uh, glass insulators are very attractive to sh shoot because the shell explodes when heat. So, some uh, people take it as uh, a fun to shoot the glass insulator and shatter uh, the insulators. Again the shattered glass is a safety hazard. These insulators uh, for transmission or distribution are not so popular in the United States. They are popular in uh, uh, Europe, Canada, Brazil and many other countries. In our country there are also several lines uh, which uh, uh, we have used glass insulator for uh, the extra high voltage and ultra high voltage uh, transmission uh, system. Uh, when you carefully look into the glass insulator, you can see the similar to a porcelain insulator, a glass insulator also has uh, uh, metallic end fittings on uh, a pin and a cap and a glass shell of a particular petticoat depending upon the creepage length. You can see various uh, types of uh, glass insulators. These are normally without the petticoats or sheds usually used in uh, uh, the desert areas where uh, uh, high wind could damage the uh, uh, petticoats or the porcelain or uh, glass shells. So, we will be looking into how the manufacturing of uh, the glass insulator this is also a very important uh, uh, to know that. So, manufacture of glass insulator again is a similar uh, process like the porcelain or uh, ceramic insulator. But here the materials uh, which are uh, employed uh, for the manufacture of uh, glass are basically the soda ash, a uh, field spar, then coolant. This could be a small pieces of glasses with minor amounts of uh, other agents which are used. So, these uh, materials are crushed to a powdered form, properly screened measured and uh, later on put into a storage towers. So, the mixture which is uh, uh, available in the storage uh, towers is fed to the electric furnace. This undergoes a melting phase and then the fining phase what uh, is known. Uh, here the glass is uh, at the molten uh, uh, stage uh, where it is uh, around 1400 degree Celsius and the glass can be drawn at a known rate depending upon the heat input and the input feed to the uh, feed of the raw materials. So, at known temperature whatever specified uh, temperature the glass is normally the molten glass uh, is uh, normally dropped into the cast iron mold uh, and immediately uh, this is pressed to the required shape. So, depending upon the shape whether it is a normal uh, insulator of, uh, used uh, for a normal conditions or the anti fog type with the sheds uh, uh, different uh, uh, sheds uh, for the higher creepage length or the insulators which are used for uh, desert condition basically known as aerofoil with uh, no sheds. So, such uh, 
mould is already prepared and the molten uh, glass is drawn and uh, this uh, is fed uh, and to the cast iron uh, mould and immediately it is pressed to the required shape which is to be obtained. So, the moulded shell later on is uh, transferred to heat uh, tempering uh, followed by the thermal shock where shells are normally dropped into the water uh, basin. So, where water, so these shells which are not tampered properly or not uh, uh, being uh, having some uh, defects uh, during this uh, above process are absorbed visually and are collected and are normally inspected uh, and further process will never be uh, uh, done for these uh, defected uh, insulators. Uh, we should know that alumina is normally uh, cemented uh, and later on used for uh, cementing and uh, insulator further are uh, sent for proof testing both mechanically and further electrically. So, various uh, testings are carried out at the factory which are known as the routine uh, type of uh, test which we will be uh, discussing uh, in the future uh, uh, discussions. So, this conformal test uh, will be done according to the applicable uh, standards could be IEC, IEEE or national uh, or European standards uh, and the insulators are tested. Further after the testing confirmation uh, these insulators are uh, create for put up in the form of a crate where number of insulators are put in a crate and are shipped to the desired location of the utility. This is how the manufacturing uh, process uh, of the glass insulator takes place. So, what are the uh, material uh, hardware uh, which are used along with the uh, silica glass and other uh, materials which we have discussed. Uh, these are basically the end fittings how important uh, is like the ceramic uh, we were uh, discussing about the uh, Portland cement, the end fittings uh, so on for uh, porcelain insulator. Similar to that the metal components are to be cemented, cemented to the glass shells which have been uh, obtained. Uh, this provide a means of transmitting mechanical load uh, which may apply to suspension insulators or post insulators or the insulators which are used in sub, uh, for the substation equipment production. So, usually uh, malleable and ductile iron uh, and forged steel protect usually uh, against the corrosion are normally used for the hardware of pin and cap. So, these are initially nailed properly and the casting is done by either grinding or machining and uh, galvanizing. Uh, so, the surface in contact with the cement is properly coated with the bituminous uh, paint. Further steel forging is normally carried out uh, for pins of the suspension uh, glass insulators. The steel components are further galvanized and coated with bituminous paint to obtain more strength. So, this is important uh, that is one of the reason where uh, galvanizing and coating with bituminous paint is uh, carried out to obtain more strength. For some limited applications uh, the manufacturers also employ aluminum, aluminum, aluminum uh, alloys uh, which are used, uh, but these are again uh, not uh, very economical. So, depending upon the uh, usage and importance, uh, so aluminum alloys are being used. So, cement similar to the porcelain or uh, the ceramic uh, insulators, here aluminous cement in a very clear form that is a neat form where it contains no sand aggregate or filler in cement mix is basically used for the assembly of glass insulators. So, in curing aluminum trioxide L2 with alumina is liberated from mono calcium aluminate phase. So, earlier in the Portland cement was employed for the porcelain or a ceramic insulator, there lime uh, was liberated uh, during a curing purpose. So, here uh, it is alumina usually is liberated from the mono calcium aluminate phase in case of glass insulators. And there are no chemical uh, reaction which takes place 
because of the galvanized insulator. So, there is a need to coat the hardware with a bituminous uh, layer that is the reason where a bituminous layer is coated. And alumina which has a very high compression strength, adequate mechanical strength is developed after 24 hours uh, after the curing in water uh, and further to mechanical uh, proof test. So, this is how the insulator cementing or insulator hardware uh, are fixed to the glass uh, shells in the manufacturing stage. This is again the flow chart of the discussion which we have uh, just uh, talked about uh, various manufacturing stages. So, this uh, shows the entire uh, manufacturing uh, process of the glass insulators where you can see the raw materials are uh, collected and stored further these are uh, powdered uh, using uh, the screening mechanisms. So, further to the screening it is sent to the uh, furnace where it is melted at a temperature. Uh, after the melting of the temperature uh, these are uh, carefully uh, uh, molded using the uh, uh, mold uh, cast iron moldings for uh, different uh, shapes or a uh, required shape. Further this uh, a toughening uh, to be made it is sent for the firing and after the firing the insulators are dropped in the um, uh, uh, chamber uh, containing water. This further uh, shells are taken out and uh, are uh, further assembled along with the cap and pin uh, using a suitable coatings and uh, the alumnus cement. Further after finishing the product uh, the glass insulators undergo uh, various uh, mechanical and uh, electrical tests at the uh, factory which are best known as a routine test and further the inspection and the quality uh, measures are met. These insulators are uh, packed properly in the crates and are dispatched uh, to the required locations. Uh, this is how the steps uh, in the manufacturing of glass a very important uh, uh, process uh, for the glass manufacturing. So, when you carefully look here uh, this is how the uh, shell or the insulator cut section of the uh, glass insulator looks uh, typical uh, uh, schematic of the glass insulator where you can see the cap. The cap again is a malleable iron hot uh, dipped galvanized iron which is used. Uh, you can see here a bituminous layer is being coated, coated and the alumina cement is used here for the jointing of both the cap and the glass shell. So, the toughened glass uh, which is uh, obtained from the molten uh, state at a different temperature uh, you can see various uh, types of shells are normally employed. Further there is again uh, alumna cement which is uh, connected to the pin of the insulator. So, the cap and pin of the insulator uh, the, with the glass shell is embedded with the alumna cement uh, coated with the bituminous layer. Uh, this is uh, how the uh, glass uh, insulator uh, looks. Uh, this is again uh, a pin type of insulator normally employed for a lesser voltages. Uh, here again uh, you can see the different uh, pin uh, insulators uh, jointed um, with the help of alumina cement and uh, a toughened glass shells or it could be 2, 3 shells which are jointed depending upon the voltage and the uh, creepage requirement. And you have a, a, a zinc symbol which is basically to used uh, for the uh, having uh, thread arrangements and used to mount on the poles. So, you have a threaded arrangement uh, this insulator could be uh, mounted on the uh, uh, platform of the pole of uh, uh, the uh, wherever the insulator are to be placed. So, further uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, the manufacturing of uh, the porcelain or a ceramic insulator, the glass insulator both are uh, electrically and mechanically stable are uh, very good are being used for a very long period of uh, time more than a, uh, a century uh, old technology. A uh, lot of uh, changes have do happened in both the ceramic and glass insulator pertaining to the voltage level the creepage distances the shapes have undergone several changes and are being used. Uh, now, we will uh, discuss about uh, the recent uh, or a decade or two 
or three decades uh, uh, since the polymer or the development of composite a polymeric or a silicon rubber insulators sometimes known as non ceramic insulators. Uh, so, I will be using the terminologies either uh, composite polymeric silicon rubber or non ceramic during the discussion. So, these insulators uh, are basically organic in nature and were first uh, used somewhere in uh, 1940s the first polymers uh, tried out for electrical insulations were bisphenol and cyclo lymphatic epoxy resins which were uh, introduced in mid 40s to 50s. Uh, later on cyclo lymphatic epoxies uh, were introduced in uh, late uh, 50s uh, particularly for outdoor insulation. These were used in uh, uh, 60s or late 60s in England later in France, Italy and uh, US. So, lot of uh, research activity has gone into this there are uh, being several advantages for uh, going in this uh, insulation. Uh, so, in uh, Germany uh, these units uh, were initially tested for in the field uh, during the late 70s uh, sorry late 60s and in early 70s. So, initially the manufacturers uh, introduced the first generation uh, polymers or a commercial polymeric transmission insulators uh, way back in 1970s which are uh, known as the first generation uh, commercially available or uh, polymeric transmission line insulators used for both transmission and distribution initially tried out. So, several companies uh, were available uh, most of the companies do exist right uh, like uh, Cerever which uh, use the housing material EPR is ethylene propylene rubber uh, somewhere in 1975 this is in France then Hoyo Brass, Rosenthal, Sediver. Uh, TDL, LAP, Reliable. So, several of these uh, companies uh, started during the similar uh, period of a the 1975 to 1983 uh, using either ethylene uh, propylene rubber or the silicon rubber. So, these uh, materials uh, which are of organic in nature uh, were uh, being tried out uh, in the initially stages where the silicon rubber insulator uh, looks like this you have a metal end fittings you have a silicon rubber housing and from the metal fittings uh, inside there is a fiberglass uh, a rod which is uh, uh, again on the fiberglass rod this silicon rubber or the ethylene propylene rubber uh, has been uh, fixed. So, this is how the polymer insulator looks. So, we will look into how importance is the composite or a polymeric or a silicon rubber insulator, how easy or a, uh, is it to manufacture and the proper care which is to be employed for the manufacture and the transportation and so on. So, now as mentioned non ceramic insulators uh, were introduced in 70s particularly for transmission because of advantages. So, many people many industries started uh, uh, the business of uh, the polymeric or uh, the composite or non ceramic insulators and these uh, thought uh, were to be used for all the voltages. The main advantages uh, of uh, the polymer or non ceramic insulators being uh, very light uh, in weight, uh, flexible, uh, having a high mechanical strength to weight ratio. These uh, insulators showed a strong intention and also low degree of uh, standardization. So, very important. So, several advantages uh, for both the manufacturers and the utilities. So, this is how a typical uh, uh, I am repeating the insulator looks. You have a metal uh, end fittings uh, inside connecting from the metal end fittings is the fiberglass rod. Then on the fiberglass rod the weather sheds uh, or the silicon rubber or the composite material uh, which is embedded on this. Uh, uh, rod. So, end fittings are properly uh, crimped to the metal uh, to the fiberglass rod. Uh, this is how the insulator uh, looks. So, you have a uniform circumferential compression near this um, end fittings, you have a high reliability of the end fittings pressure which is again uh, taking care of the fiberglass rod here. A strong adhesion between the housing and the rod has to be done. So, there is a, a paint which is being made and also the silicon uh, unit cast housing is done 
uh, silicon housing with uh, which is an excellent hydrophobicity is normally used. So, this is how a uh, typical uh, non ceramic or a polymer insulator uh, looks. How is the silicon rubber insulator uh, manufactured? So, we have uh, uh, previously discussed about the manufacture of uh, the glass and the uh, ceramic or uh, the porcelain insulator. We will look now uh, into the importance and how the manufacture of uh, silicon rubber and what is the care to be taken uh, during the manufacture and during the transportation. So, before going into the manufacturing stage, what is the main composition of the silicon rubber uh, or the composite material which are used for the transmission insulators are important. So, this uh, compound which is I mentioned as an organic uh, uh, compound basically consists of a poly dimethyl uh, siloxin uh, which is uh, known as a PDMS structure. So, poly in the sense several uh, no, several uh, chains of this uh, uh, dimethyl siloxin uh, structure is shown here. So, basically the silicon again uh, which is uh, consisting of oxygen and the methyl group. This again a methyl group is an alkyl uh, which is uh, derived from uh, methane uh, which contains one carbon and uh, three hydrogen atoms which are uh, bonded. Uh, so, this is how the structure and there are a number of structures in a silicon uh, rubber uh, PDMS uh, structure. So, polydimethyl siloxin with different functional groups uh, that is OH, uh, C, CH2, H and others uh, are uh, 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 consists, consists of these uh, groups. So, here apart from the silicon uh, rubber uh, PDMS uh, there are fillers which are uh, employed. This uh, fillers could be of a pyro a pyrogenic or a precipitated silica, quartz powder and uh, others. So, the vulcanizers which are used are peroxides and has silicon. So, catalysts for the material uh, used are platinum compounds, tin compounds and some others. So, what are the additives for uh, this compound? Again, they have uh, adhesive agents, uh, softening agents. Uh, various pigments this is for coloring of the uh, insulators and others. So, carbon blacks the pigment types, conductive tape types and also the special types. So, aluminum trihydrate, aluminum hydroxide which is known as ATH is normally used as a filler materials for this uh, uh, silicon uh, rubber. So, the percentage of the various fillers and uh, the PDMS is uh, uh, decided by the manufacturer and uh, each manufacturer uh, they have uh, a, a, a special uh, uh, composition uh, for the manufacturing of this uh, compound. So, basically as mentioned earlier the polymer insulator uh, consists of a metal end fittings as shown here. This is a silicon rubber uh, material uh, and the fiberglass rod uh, which is embedded here. Again silicon rubber initially is the sheds are important uniform sheds were uh, absorbed during the manufacture later on because of the uh, advantages uh, these sheds are of uneven in nature are being employed that we will be trying to discuss in the future when it comes to the testing and uh, the performance of this uh, silicon rubber insulators. So, what are the steps uh, involved in the manufacturing process of a silicon rubber or composite or a polymer insulator. So, as mentioned raw materials we discussed uh, used uh, for this uh, insulator are basically silicon rubber, the fiberglass rod and the metal end fittings. So, this uh, metal end fittings which are employed uh, for uh, the insulator are to be uh, cleaned with the help of ultrasonic cleaning process where the metal end fittings are dipped into a liquid for a known time and are uh, left for any kind of impurities present over the surface. So, cleaning of uh, the impurities of the metal uh, are very important fittings. So, these end fittings uh, again undergo crimping and swagging which is a step by step process of uh, the crimping uh, method. 
So, how the selection of material uh, is done is to see that appropriate uh, cleaned metal fittings above uh, which is done using the ultrasonic cleaning process uh, and the fiberglass rods are also selected. Uh, this cleaned metallic fittings are inserted into the identified uh, fiberglass rods of known dimensions of known length. Uh, the metal to metal uh, distance which is also known as lip to lip distance is maintained as per uh, the prescribed gauge by inserting rubber or polypropylene cushion to ball side or socket side metal fittings uh, so that the damage is not uh, caused during the crimping process. So, jaw setting is usually done by using the suitable jaws uh, which are selected according to the diameter of the crimping portion and the crimping length which is mounted on the crimping cavity. So, there are various settings which are uh, done uh, for the crimping uh, from the initial conditions uh, to various uh, crimping pressure, crimping mode and uh, crimping uh, knob settings. So, these are done at a proper pressure and as per the standards available for a particular uh, dimension of the uh, uh, fiberglass rod. So, crimping mode uh, settings can be either manual semi-automatic or automatic. So, the composite insulators which are uh, presently being manufactured in the range of uh, 90 kilo Newtons to 160 kilo Newtons or more and for attraction insulation crimping uh, jaws are normally adjusted to a dia of 45 millimeter length of uh, 40 millimeter and uh, which for at 6 seconds time and a crimping pressure somewhere around 150 kg per centimeter. So, this is a typical example for the traction insulators of a particular length. So, this uh, stages of crimping is also very important uh, to be considered. Further surface preparation, the surface of uh, the fiberglass rod is to be made very smooth and the surface is coated uh, by using a diluted primer. Uh, which is a commercial uh, uh, normally av available is chemlock uh, where is applied to the sheds or housing and are properly attached to the fiberglass rod. These coatings help uh, to maintain hydrophobicity so that there is no erosion of the material or surface flashover which takes place. Uh, so, the applying of the material along with the end fittings and also heating in a woven to a temperature will help in the proper uh, surface uh, which uh, further uh, goes for uh, the molding. So, where uh, various molds uh, molding arrangements were tried out presently the injection molding is normally employed this is uh, suitable uh, and this injection mold is normally operated at 160 degrees and number of sheds. Uh, the volume, pressure, curing time are uh, normally provided under the standard uh, specifications uh, for a particular product. So, the molding is done usually in three stages uh, where the bed of the machine is cleaned by using a valve lapping compound and later by the jet of a compressed air. So, here again the curing process is done so that uh, this becomes hard and uh, rods are now housed uh, using silicon rubber uh, by the process. So, generally alternate uh, type of sheds are preferred. So, earlier I have mentioned the point uh, why the importance of uh, alternative type of sheds. This is mainly to see in case of rain the continuous uh, stream of water is uh, discretized into droplets reducing the frequency of flash out. So, if the sheds are uniform. Uh, because of the rain uh, the flash over uh, because of the water droplets could form and uh, reduces the creepage length. So, to ensure that the sheds are of alternative type uh, bigger and smaller are normally used. Then after the inspection molding it goes for the insulator uh, goes for the deep flashing here the insulator is placed on the racks or stacked in the wooden uh, supports after the compound component has cooled to ambient temperature uh, and some further e sticking extra material silicon rubber material which is extra is removed manually or by using a, a knife 
in case of uh, traction insulator three types uh, we have uh, bracket insulator which is for inclined purposes 9 ton insulator which is to maintain the temp, uh, horizontal uh, uh, position and also has to make it horizontal so the weight of a 9 ton is used and a stray arm insulator uh, to be in the horizontal process are normally used so testing routine tests after the insulators are ready uh, these have to undergo the routine test in the uh, factory uh, performed during the production uh, before the crating and the shipment is done so these uh, tests mechanical or electrical or thermal uh, mechanical tests uh, will eliminate defective insulators uh, which might either uh, otherwise fail uh, immediately upon installation and uh, energization so in the factory uh, before uh, the dispatch uh, uh, mechanical electrical uh, and other um, mechanical uh, bending tests are usually performed uh, before the insulators are dispatched so mechanical tensile uh, strength we will be discussing several of the tests uh, this is just to give a brief introduction about the mechanical tens uh, test usually here the testing fixtures with uh, insulators are placed on the mechanical test plate connected in the form of a string the number of insulators again uh, will be decided by the amount of load uh, to be applied the stress which is to be applied uh, varies uh, 60 percent of the total mechanical of the insulator string uh, for a time frame of a minute so the load is then realized and observed for withstand or failure in the factory similarly appropriate electrical tests are carried out for a period of one minute and in case of no flash over uh, this insulator deems to be uh, cleared the particular test bending test the again completion of mechanical and electrical tests some are randomly selected and mounted to test bed for ultimate uh, breaking load and determined and the value of breaking stress is usually calculated and uh, found so after the electrical mechanical and uh, bending tests uh, which are uh, routine in nature uh, the insulators uh, from the quality section is cleared for the dispatch where after clear clearance for the insulators are normally uh, stored horizontally in the crates uh, properly uh, uh, with packing and uh, fixing and ensured that undue load uh, is not exerted on the polymer sheds uh, where they could damage if it is not properly uh, taken care so this is how the process of uh, the polymer uh, insulator uh, happens uh, the similar uh, flow chart is uh, shown here uh, where it gives the metal end fittings fiberglass rod the silicon uh, compound the raw material the raw material silicon compound fiberglass rod metal end fittings are the required uh, raw materials this uh, metal uh, fittings as mentioned are cleaned with the ultrasonic uh, arrangement uh, where uh, the impurities are completely eliminated further the crimping of the metal uh, end fittings of the metal end fittings and the fiberglass rod is done and the coating primer coating as mentioned is done to the insulator surface to see a proper uh, attachment of the silicon rubber is done on this then these are sent to the injection mold where in the injection molding you have uh, various uh, types of insulators which are to be used could be for uh, distribution or uh, transmission or the traction a uh, suitable uh, temperature and uh, the compound is been fed where uh, depending upon the sheds uh, this injection molding is been uh, done and it is compressed further the curing of the insulator is done and it is sent for various uh, deflashing and various testing aspects both uh, mechanical electrical uh, bending arrangements uh, so this uh, apart from this there are some other chemical uh, and tests which are normally carried out it could be the specific gravity hardness testing uh, tensile uh, strength elongation of the rubber uh, so all these uh, tests apart from the electrical mechanical bending so the chemical and the um, surface uh, changes which could take place are carried out and finally this uh, material upon the clearances after undergoing the mechanical electrical uh, testings uh, these are normally these are dispatched to, to the uh, uh, utilities uh, for using in the transmission distribution or in the uh, 
traction uh, purposes. So, we have uh, till now discussed about uh, the uh, various uh, procedures or various process involved in the manufacturing of the ceramic uh, glass and the recent uh, uh, insulators which are being used for transmission the composite or a polymer insulators. So, various stages of uh, the manufacturing have to be taken care uh, impurities uh, which could be present during the manufacturing stage if left unnoticed could uh, uh, have a serious uh, consequences in the field. So, every stage of the manufacturing process has to be uh, carefully uh, taken care and see the product uh, is manufactured without any defects, impurities and so on. Further, after the manufacturing of the insulators maybe uh, the ceramic porcelain glass or the composite insulators. Uh, handling of this is a very important uh, task handling or a managing of this overhead uh, insulators either from the factory dispatch uh, to the utility or uh, the uh, required place and how it is being handled for the stringing. So, each and every uh, information is of very important it is not that a manufacturing is done in a very precise way and the usage or a handling if it is done purely poorly then this could again uh, see the insulator failures in the uh, field. So, care has to be taken for proper handling or managing of this overhead insulators. Here we have few points which we will be discussing for all the three types of uh, insulators uh, the first being the porcelain or the ceramic insulators. So, initially during transportation uh, in the field the porcelain insulator may cause damage from line uh, from time to time in case if the handling is not done properly or a rough handling of this insulator is done. So, heavier insulators particularly like a line post require careful handling. So, drooping crates of suspension dropping uh, crates of suspension or pin type uh, while unloading from the truck. Uh, should be taken care as at field are common reasons where it could be damaged. Here the utility factor somewhere around 2 percent damage rate is estimated in the cost and uh, care has to be taken while loading and unloading because a small uh, damage or a hairline uh, crack could result in the failure. So, insulators that are extensively damaged uh, could be spotted but sometimes it may be also be difficult. So, hairline crack as mentioned or internal damage are not normally easily detected and this could uh, bring down the system. So, careful uh, 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 handling of this is very important. Vandalism yes uh, compared to glass insulators porcelain are not much attractive uh, and uh, particularly for people who have uh, a hobby of uh, shooting the insulators in the field. So, each uh, hit of this could uh, reduce a shell thereby marginally reducing the flash over. So, if uh, dedicated vandal removes sufficient porcelain from each insulator of the string uh, then definitely the flash over occurs at the first onset of the wetting. So, compact line designs using porcelain or post insulators are normally vulnerable to line drops which uh, result and uh, the reports of the gunshot are uh, seen. So, any single hit could cause a line post to shatter. So, vandalism care has to be taken uh, for a glass or the porcelain insulators. Similarly, for the glass insulator handling uh, is very important where here the failure of glass insulators uh, originates from the surface and is usually attributed to the micro cracks which could be present during the uh, uh, loading unloading and also the failure which could be uh, seen. Normally uh, the rate of suspension burst rate of suspension range anywhere between 2 per 10,000 per here sometimes it could go more than 15 to 20 percent. So, higher rates of uh, uh, the activity burst rate are normally reported uh, during the construction of new lines and are handled in the field. So, handling of this is very important. People normally drag on the ground and uh, this could impact the small stones 
rocks or uh, a hard sand, a hard uh, uh, soil where a small chips could develop in the tough end glass or a power cell insulators. And this chip could act as a stress concentrator uh, with moisture and thermal cycling the insulator shell uh, could eventually shatter. So, this uh, has to be properly taken care while the stringing is being done a proper uh, uh, insulator shifting of the insulator to the exact position without uh, damaging or uh, dragging has to be kept taken. And handling of uh, glass insulators uh, for vandalism uh, very uh, lot of uh, reports have been seen particularly in North America uh, where uh, they have uh, good success with toughened glass and other experience have very high rate of vandalism. So, on uh, one hand glass insulators are uh, we say superior to porcelain and non ceramic insulators. On the other hand utilities do not favor uh, glass insulator due to high rate of vandalism uh, because there will be a flash over and a lockout on the permanent fault. So, this is a uh, 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 one of the major concern uh, pertaining to the glass insulators. Coming to the handling of the uh, composite uh, insulation, so as mentioned composite insulation uh, silicon rubber on the outer shed I am again repeating the fiberglass rod between the metal end fittings. So, these non ceramic or composite insulators uh, can easily get damaged through handling. So, very important and uh, damage to housing during transportation. So, crates which are made for the transport have to be carefully ca considered where the overlapping of the silicon rubber sheds do not happen and mechanical forces do not exert on the silicon rubber. So, once damage to the housing the effects of moisture and the voltage stress could result uh, in two possible uh, failures which will be discussed. It could be the tracking along the core or the brittle fracture very very serious uh, to the non ceramic insulator. So, during installation uh, there are reports of crack, cracking of the core uh, because of the cantilever or torsional loading of the insulators. Tracking of core again uh, depends to the extent of the core which is exposed, a location of the damage uh, which is relative to line end wetting and also amount of the local environmental uh, pollution or a contamination which exists at that uh, place. So, brittle fracture failure also could happen if the damage is near the line end of the insulator uh, due to the production of uh, nitric acid uh, particularly during the corona discharges uh, combination of the moisture. So, these corona discharges from the end fittings like the corona control rings and if the microstructure failures during the crimping could cause and if there is a damage near the line end where the water seeps in nitric acid formation and brittle fracture uh, uh, issues are also noticed in the long rod composite insulators which are used for uh, EHV and UHV transmission. So, brittle fracture at center of insulator or at the structure end are rarely reported again uh, this could be because of the end fittings because of the corona, because of the water seepage, because of the crimping at the ends. So, this could be the reasons for uh, the uh, not many failures observed at the center of the insulator or at the structure. Vandalism again here a uh, non ceramic uh, composite uh, suspension and line post insulator. Uh, this could withstand a severe uh, gunshot without electrical or uh, mechanical damages. And these are generally not easy to locate for the gunshot uh, in the field because of uh, the uh, structure of this insulators as brittle fracture of the core is accomplished by the drop line drop insulators in hunting areas uh, should be inspected regularly that is uh, in case uh, polymer insulators are employed where people are prone to shoot this insulator. So, regular uh, inspecting is essential for IHV and UHV lines. So, we have uh, discussed about the manufacturing of uh, various insulators uh, porcelain glass and uh, composite insulation. 
which are used for the transmission uh, systems. We have also discussed about the material handling, the insulator handling, the transportation, the dispatch and how importance uh, is or the care to be taken uh, during the stringing of uh, the insulators. We will uh, discuss about the design criteria and the insulation uh, coordination uh, in the next class. So, thank you.